You've got bad buggy boys eating your salad greens in your hydroponics or aquaponics system. Well today, I'm going to teach you how to take care of them without irradiating your entire crop and putting those nasty chemicals in your body. And the who, what, when, where, why, and how these predatory bugs can better help you to have a good eating salad. Let's get started. So you're taking along and you've got aphids, fungus, gnats, white fly, all these other guys just flying around in your garden hydroponic system. And your last hope is, well, lev and let lev. So these buggy boys can e eat a little treat. Let them do their thing. Two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Halt! Who crawls there? <laughs> Oh, you're hungry, huh, buggy boy? Well, I guess one tomato won't hurt. Uh, just don't tell the other rabbit, okay? Before you know it, because you let them do a little thing, they've eaten your entire garden, and you've got no microgreens left to enjoy your nice little salad for the evening. Oh no! You didn't! You did! Oh, fellow rabbit, it's just one hungry, defenseless little bug. But you don't understand. He'll tell his friends where there's food and... Oh no! My prize winning tomatoes! <laughs> Well, you gave them a chance. You try to do their thing. The only thing you got left to do is take out your insecticides and fumigate the entire place. Show them who's boss. Well, hold on a second. You don't have to necessarily turn directly to the insecticides. There are other options. One of the options that I greatly enjoy trying out is called predatory insects. There's two main types that you can work with. It doesn't matter whether you're a commercial large-scale operation or a small-scale harvey farm. These two guys will help you greatly help out. The first is going to be praying mantis, the most pious little insect you'll ever meet. Always praying, trying to do his thing to his deity above. The next little guy that I like is going to be the ladybugs, the hardest fightingest, daintiest little bug that you've ever seen. Don't let his name fool you. Just because it's a ladybug doesn't mean it's a hard fighting machine that'll help to control those baddie boys. We're looking at both of these predatory insects, not only the praying mantis and the ladybug, both of which can be found at your local neighborhood farm and ranch store or online. That's one of the great things about modern day, is these bugs are going to be naturally able to be around and you don't have to try and wait and hope that they fly in from the outside world. However, you don't want to take the time to try and find them or gather them up outside because that just takes too much time. I went ahead and done all the hard work for you. Click on the link in the description below and I'll take you right to where you can get some great fighting ladybugs and praying mantis. Now that you know where they can get located, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how great they are and what they can do for you. The praying mantis are a big bad boy and insect for insect are going to be eating most of those guys very voraciously. And out of the two, he's going to be able to consume the most batty boy insects. However, they are tend to be a little bit more expensive per insect because they are so large. And they can potentially get a little bit territorial fighting each other as well as those bad boys. That's why personally, I like to go with the ladybugs myself. Because not only per insect are they a lot cheaper, they're going to be a little bit easier to acquire. And they get along well as roommates. And so they're not going to be too terrible trying to fight each other if someone else is crowding each other's space out. And so, per a group, they're going to be able to control those baddie boys a whole lot better than those praying mantis will. Even though they are so great at devouring these baddie boys, they do have some downsides. If the food source that they're trying to eat does tend to disappear because they've been so good at controlling it and eating those as their prey, they will do one of two things. They will either fly away to find a new source of food, or if they can't find it, they will just die away. That be the case, if it is outside in your garden, you may have to replenish your ladybug population or praying mantis population quite frequently. If it's within a greenhouse though, they're more likely to die off. And so in the same case, you may have to replenish them. In that case, when you're looking at these two different types of insects, it's not going to be an instant kill type of thing. The best situation is going to be a long-term balance where you have some bad bugs, some good bugs, and they help to balance each other out. So if it is a problem, and even though I 
prefer not to use this method if it's a difference between losing your entire crop and allowing the buddy boys to win, I would say go ahead and use some insecticides. I don't like it, but it's there. It's better to have some food left over and use a little bit of insecticide rather than losing the entire thing and letting the other guy win. However, if you can't afford to wait a little bit of time, I much prefer the ladybug or praying mantis method as it is a much more natural and a healthier option to use. So if you do choose to employ the method of predatory bugs and it starts to get out of hand and you decide that you have to use insecticides, keep in mind when you're using insecticides, not only will it kill the bad bugs, but it will kill the bug good bugs too. So you will have to replenish that population. It's kind of like you're going to the doctors and you get a slight little cold, so you decide to use chemotherapy as your treatment. Keep in mind you want to use the right tool for the right job. If you've got cancer, go ahead and use chemotherapy, but it's going to kill the good cells along with the bad, keeping that in mind. So if you just have the common cold, there is no need to use chemotherapy to get rid of all those bugs. Just take it nice and slow and look for the long-term solution versus the quick fix. Because you are using live bugs, these predatory insects, to help control your aphid, white fly, and all those other batty boys, it makes for a better balance altogether. Not only that, but these bugs do qualify for organic certification to help in controlling that bug population. And when you're dealing with organic certification, there are not a whole lot of options as there is when comparing it to what's considered more the traditional method of farming when you have much more chemical options available to you. Likewise, if you're dealing with an aquaponics situation, you also have to be very careful in the type of chemicals that you use. Because if you do use some of those harsh chemicals, it will then get in the water supply and then relate into killing the fish supply potentially as well. And there goes your main nutrient manufacturing capability within the aquaponics systems. Another great advantage of these insects is that there is no, going to be no re-entry waiting period. So you can immediately release them into your greenhouse or your space and continue gardening, harvesting, doing what you love doing, spending time in your garden. There isn't going to be a re-entry period of 24 to 48 hours like there is with some insecticide applications. Perhaps one of the best things that I love about these predatory insects is the price. Previously, they were quite expensive and hard to obtain, and your only hope of getting them was that they would fly in through natural searching for food in the outside world. Luckily today, through the great means of local farm and ranch stores, or even purchase it online, you can find them for a re relatively decent price. As of the spring of 2019, you can find them for several thousand ladybugs for less than $20, or you can find several hundred praying mantis for a similar price. That's one of the great things that I love about predatory insects, is they are relatively cost effective for what you're getting. You can expect to say pay a similar price when you're looking at spraying insecticides, sometimes even more. That's one of the great things that I love about it, is many times if you're able to get it well balanced, it is a one-time application and release versus the insecticides in order to get complete control, you're going to have to be spraying every on a monthly basis or even a bi-weekly basis and that can add up in your pocketbook very quickly. We'd like to thank you for joining us this video as we took a look at predatory insects and how they can better help us to control those bad old buggy boys from eating our vegetables and leafy greens. I look forward to seeing you next time. And now, here's a word from our sponsors. This episode of Yule Acres is brought to you by Yule Acres Grapefruit Naturally Scented Lip Balm. For more information about this product, click on the link in the description below.